Hello, 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 all the replay viewers who are on first. And thank you for joining our journey, my journey, hopefully your journey as well, to call in the one, our soulmate, create amazing relationship. Hello, hello. We are, wow, we've made it to day 34 of Calling in the One by Katherine Woodward Thomas. And today is all about developing emotional literacy. Something I have been working on for quite some time. Am I Armenian? No. <laughs> no. Well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe there's some in there. Um, so today is a good lesson. It's about our feelings. All that good stuff. Hello. Hello. Um, so yeah, we've made it to day 34. I don't know what you're saying. Okay. But share this if you want to with your people. It's about emotional literacy. I would love for more women to get on this. 34. Lesson 34. Lesson 34. Ooh, there you go. I like it. I like it. Um, all right. So we have, we're starting with day 34 of 49. So there's 49. So we're almost there. We've almost made it to the end. I'm slowly getting these on YouTube, but let's get right into it. Um, this couple, Catherine talks about this couple, Rachel and Robert. So they've been together seven months now. They're even engaged and they were in complete bliss for the first few months. In fact, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Pat Allen, I get to some of her stuff sometimes here in LA. She's super entertaining and I know she's been on the Millionaire Matchmaker. It's definitely a show, um, but it's very entertaining. And she talks about how there's the first nine months of a relationship, there's three months of bliss, then three months of getting clear, and then another three months. And after nine months of these three months sectors, we should know if we're gonna you know, put an engagement ring on somebody or not. So, they're in month seven, and it's going downhill. So, they go to see Catherine Woodward Thomas to see if they can figure this out, get back into the bliss stage, create that union, and what, what, oh, everyone always says, I have great eyebrows. Thank you. I do them myself. <laughs> um, so, what, what Catherine Woodward Thomas notices, that's the author of this book, right away is that Robert has issues articulating his feelings. I have issues doing this. I sometimes don't even know what I'm feeling and I have to like meditate and feel into the experience to figure out what I'm feeling because sometimes I'm so like locked up up here in my brain. So feelings are sometimes difficult to, okay, we're blocking you. Thank you for playing. And get honest and present and really get to what we're feeling. So Robert's common response to Rachel when she was talking about something was, it's a true way, it's a two-way street. Love's a two-way street. Or he'd say something like, I feel criticized. Well, criticized isn't a, that's not a feeling. That's an act, that's an action that's happening. So really there's an underlying feeling below the criticism. So that's what they decided to work on. And she talks about some book called, I've never heard of it, sounds phenomenal, about emotional intelligence. That's the name of the book by Daniel Goleman. And apparently we've gotten up to 67% of a divorce rate in America. Fabulous, fabulous. It's a, we're doing lessons, so it's a daily lesson and we've made it to day 34. So divorce rate is up to 67% in America. And what he says, and this is so true, is that he acknowledges that there's an erosion of social pressures to stay in bad relationships or bad marriages. So before it might be an economic reason to be in a relationship, in a marriage. Uh, it might be for work. It might be that you don't have a job as a wife and you stay home with the kids. Well now, that is gone. You don't need to be in a relationship it's very okay for women to be in the workforce and a single mom and have children and be working. That's so standard now. So the need to be in a relationship, to save the marriage, to keep it going, isn't 
as high as it used to historically. So what he says is now more than ever is how important the emotional dynamic between a couple is for a st stable relationship. So emotional attunement are, and empathy are more accurately or acutely necessary now than ever to ensure a successful union. Yeah, sure, sure. But I'm going for a long-term relationship, so it, that emotional intelligence needs to be pretty high for me. Emotional IQ. So emotional literacy includes the, st the ability to accurately read one's own feelings as well as another's and then to manage them by self-soothing or delaying impulsivity to some extent and then to comprehend and respond appropriately to the feelings of others. How's that working out for you? Ha! <laughs> You're funny. So, do you guys get that? Mm, yeah, definitely. So, I want to read this sentence one more time because I think it's very powerful. Emotional literacy includes the ability to accurately read one's own feelings and to manage them by self-soothing or delaying impulsivity to some extent and then to comprehend and respond appropriately to the feelings of others. We don't have to do these things perfectly, but solid relationships will require that we are able to recognize our own feelings and share them after contemplating maybe where they're coming from. Because sometimes we are in a reaction state and, and, and being reactive instead of responding, and those are two different terms. Um, I'm sure we covered that in some earlier chapter. So empathy is crucial, she says. Empathy is the crucial ingredient to a great relationship, and it's enhanced by in direct proportion to one's ability to identify and be present with one's own emotions. She then talks about another book called Living with Feeling, and this author, psychotherapist Lucia Cap Capaccione, I don't know if I said that right, then that she describes nine families of feelings. So I'm just gonna touch on these really quick because it might open up some, some thoughts for you. So the first family of feelings, since we're getting in touch with our feelings, is happy. I like that one. And that includes blissful, delighted, enthusiastic, joyful, grateful, gleeful, joyful, grateful. That's what I'm doing next right after this is I'm practicing being in a state of gratitude every day. Yes. The second family is sad. And this includes discouraged, disheartened, down, gloomy, hurt, lonely. The third family of feelings is anger, angry, and this includes bitter, enraged, furious, resentful. Yes. The fourth category of family of feelings is afraid, fear, horrified, nervous, anxiety, terrified, shaky. Huh. I like the next one. Playful, playful. I like being in playful feeling. <laughs> That's where I was the other day when I was on because I had just gotten off all the Ferris wheels and roller coaster rides at Santa Monica Pier and oh my goodness, it was so much fun. Honoring our inner child. So playful includes childlike, creative, free, lighthearted, spontaneous, and whimsical. Then there's loving which is affectionate, compassionate, friendly, kind, tender. Tender, I like it. Then there's confused, which I find myself in oof, quite often. Confused. Actually, no, I, I haven't been confused lately, but I used to be confused a lot. Uh, ambivalent, bewildered, conflicted, hesitant, perplexed, troubled. Then there's depressed. Hmm. I'm surprised they're sad and depressed. That's two different ones. Okay. Depressed, the family of depressed feelings is dejected, despondent, helpless, hopeless, weary, withdrawn. And then lastly, there's peaceful, which is calm, content, relaxed, satisfied, and tranquil. Hi, thanks for everyone that's just joining. We are talking about feelings today, emotional intelligence, and 
honoring our own feelings so that we can communicate and share them with others. Because the whole thing is that a lot of times now, ah, bye, thanks for jumping on. So right now we're in a state often where we are shameful of sharing what we actually feel. Shameful and we deny ourselves feelings. So the most important thing is that we are able to identify how we feel in the moment that we're feeling it and then be able to share that with another person in a constructive way. Okay, yes sir, sounds good. We shame ourselves for feeling the way we do. We deny our feelings that exist or try to talk ourselves out of our feelings. I am all about consistently being in a joyful place. However, I know that when I'm down, and this has taken some work, that instead of immediately flipping to a positive place, which I'm really good at, by the way, really good at. When I found out my ex-husband was cheating on me, just announced that publicly, I was angry at him for like two hours, but our marriage was already on the downturn, and so what is the price of the book? Oh, I don't know. You can just watch all the videos and then learn the lessons. I'm sharing them. So instead of being super angry and down and depressed, I was angry for about two hours and then I went immediately into a gratitude state. I was so grateful because in the state of gratitude, I knew that I had done the best that I could. I knew that I had fought for my marriage. I felt content with the effort that I had put in. Now granted, there are tons of lessons I've learned in the whole entire process and afterwards, but it is important to honor our feelings, even if it's a short period of time, and not shame ourselves for feeling the feelings. And like for me, when my dog died, oh my gosh, worst thing ever in May, this May, because I've done all this emotional intelligence work, I got to a point where I knew that I wasn't gonna just work. I wasn't just gonna go have fun or go see friends and do all this stuff to get out of the feeling that I was feeling for my, my baby, my puppy, and so I just, sat there and I just felt the emotion. I felt the sadness and I allowed it to flow through me versus being bottled up inside of me. Because that's what a lot of times happens when we hold on to our feelings versus sharing them and letting them out and just feeling into them. So, um, mm, ooh, here's another th interesting thought that she writes about. Many of us will try to distance ourselves from our feelings in an attempt to be more spiritual. So kind of like what I was just saying is getting to the space of joy all the time for me and flipping to that and reframing negative things, which I do very well. I sometimes am not honoring my feelings by doing that when I'm refraining, reframing them. So when we're reframing because we want to be more spiritual and be in this joyful, blissful state all the time, we might be negating our emotions of fear, anger, sh shame, sadness, depression, like feel it. It's important to feel it so that it can flow through us because when we are reframing all the time, then we're cutting ourselves off from the gift of the presence of emotions, which disconnect us from ourselves and then disconnect us from other people. Energy healer Carla McLaren writes about all the benefits of all of our emotions in Emotional Genius. So she says, the anger assures us, she assures us, is the keeper of boundaries, the emotion that helps us to maintain healthy separation from others. I need to, I need to let that sink in one more time. Anger is the keeper of boundaries, the emotion that helps us to maintain healthy separation from others. Hmm. So yeah, disconnection, like I was just sharing. When anger is repressed or ignored, we will have difficulty honoring ourselves appropriately and setting limits. Can I make an... <laughs> sure, go for it. I'm okay with that. Um, it's all about the message. I want everyone to be supported. Of course, everyone can go out and buy the book too. <gasps> By the way, Catherine Wilbur Thomas, she, she Twittered me, tweeted me. <laughs> she tweeted me. How cool is that? So the author tweeted me. Um, so fear, fear, the emotion we resist the most. I kind of disagree with that. I think that's the emotion that everyone loves to fall into. But 
I could be reading this wrong. So fear is the emotion that we resist the most, has its place in our lives as well, and the keeper of intuition. So that's interesting. It, it can be true. Hi, thanks for joining. So the keeper of intuition, if that's fear, what she's saying is that fear allows us to be fully present and alive in the moment. Ooh, I kind of like that. But I think that fear a lot of the time also comes from our ego and our ego wanting to keep us safe and maybe that isn't really the safest place to be. Fear keep, keeps us locked up. Jeez, we gotta step out of fear. My my thing is that this is all from work with my, I work with a coach. I'm all about coaching people and also me, I have a coach. And that's, by the way, how I first ended up on video because he was like, Bethany, you need to get yourself on camera. And I'm like, no way, I don't want that. And so he had me doing homework for two months before I felt comfortable talking. <laughs> and here I'm on day 34 and I'm feeling good. Look at me sharing stuff I shouldn't be sharing on video. Hmm. Anyways, everyone can grow and learn from my experiences and vice versa. We all learn from each other. So we got to honor our feelings and decipher where they're coming from so that we can acknowledge them, let them flow through us, and when needed, share with another person. So here's another story, Barbara and Charles. So Barbara loves Charles. She meets Charles, she knew right, right off the bat that she was gonna fall in love with this guy. Granted, they lived in California and he ended up buying a home in Colorado. Eventually invited her to come, move in with him. However, he was constantly taking vacations on his own, as if he's single. He was doing things very independently. And she wasn't feeling good at all. She was feeling ugh, like stuffed down. She was feeling frustrated with herself. Eventually, she ended up working with Catherine Woodward Thomas and realized that she was stuffing all these feelings of what she was feeling down. And of course, that was going to make her depressed. Of course, that was going to create frustration within her. Hello, we got to honor it. It's Our feelings are telling us something. They're guiding us. And so after working with Catherine, she realized that she wasn't feeling whole in this relationship. She wasn't feeling whole and complete. And so she, it was a difficult decision obviously, but she chose to go back to California. And she told him honestly and authentically how she was feeling, how she felt. And he couldn't give to her what she was what she was requesting basically for her to be in this interesting complicated relationship for sure so barbara moves back to california leaves charles she's super sad and depressed however she's honoring herself so from honoring herself and her emotions she's able to take another step you're 18 <laughs> hello well, good. Hopefully you're learning from this so you can have the most powerful, solid relationships ever moving forward. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so what's interesting, though, is that by her honoring herself and her feelings, Charles ended up moving back to L.A. or California. I don't know. I just said L.A. I don't know where they're from. And ended up proposing proposing because he wasn't honoring his own feelings probably when there was a void there he realized how much value she was offering him so now now she's she, now Barbara is honoring her feelings basically as a compass she's using her, her feelings as a compass and she's feeling more fulfilled and rich and rewarded than ever before than ever before. It's so important to honor our feelings and not just go with what society thinks or our head thinks. It is important to go with our feelings and be present to listen to them. Um, oh, and I do wanna say that it's not that she was playing an unavailable game by leaving him. She was not playing a game here. I can't stand games, like people, come on. Ugh! She was not playing a game. She was honoring her feelings. That's what she was doing. And by honoring her feelings, she 
came up with a win. Maybe it wasn't going to be Charles, maybe it was going to be another guy, but it ended up being Charles in this instance. So I do want to preface that. So when you know yourself, you don't need to get defensive for your feelings. We develop our capacity for intimacy by giving up our need to see ourselves a certain way. It's challenging to be authentic some of the times, especially with our emotions, our motivations, and our weaknesses. But as discussed before, we gotta love ourselves unconditionally, without condition. We gotta love ourselves unconditionally so that we can draw somebody else in that's gonna also be our mirror and love ourselves unconditionally, and vice versa, and vice versa. It's so powerful to honor ourselves, our weaknesses, the things that we don't like about ourselves, and these emotions, being in tune with our emotions. I'm gonna read this quote from Carla McLaren. When your emotions are allowed to take their proper place in your whole life, all, happy birthday, all feeling is possible because all energy is available. When your emotions are allowed to take their proper place in your whole life, all healing, all healing is possible because energy is opened up and available. That's super powerful. That's so powerful. We gotta open ourselves up, our chakras, our energy, honor us. No, I won't. This isn't about that. This is about emotional intelligence. So, homework, as always, there's homework. So today, we are practicing honoring ourselves. The observer self is what she calls it. So she asks for us to sit quietly as a meditation practice today. By the way, I don't know if anyone did yesterday's homework. It felt pretty good, so hopefully it felt pretty good for you guys. Um, day 33, check it out. So day 34, homework. Sit quietly for several minutes, focusing on your breath in order to deeply be present with yourself. Become very aware of our body and, in sens and any sensations that we're feeling. And then notice these sensations, and if there is a feeling of sadness, of joy, of anything that we all those nine families that we just went over so it's about listening releasing tension if you find it have you guys ever gone to a chiropractor or an acupuncturist and you leave feeling like super crazy happy or super angry oh my goodness I remember one time I went to a chiropractor and I left and I felt like a major bitch I felt like the biggest bitch and I never feel like that ever so it was this completely unique feeling that I was feeling and I kind of enjoyed it, gotta be honest, I kind of enjoyed feeling like a bitch, but I was so empowered. That, I mean, isn't that horrible, bitch, and feeling empowered? Well, that's how I felt after going to the chiropractor because our bodies hold emotions in our muscles, and so it's important to release these, and if you can do it through meditation on your own, you don't need to go to the chiropractor, but um, not that that was the intent, I was going obviously for my back, but anyway, it's about releasing these these feelings that you're feeling, honoring them, being open to experiencing them, and being able to share that. So what she says is that notice several emotions that you're feeling, maybe all at once, and then separate them one at a time, identifying them. Is it excitement, fear, disappointment, happiness, sadness? And then take some time to be with each feeling that you're noticing. <laughs> Welcome them, even the more difficult ones. Pay attention to them without resisting them and without judging them in any way. Just allow them to be present. Be with them. Now ask the, the feeling a question. Ask each of these feelings if they have any information that they wish to give you. So, for example, she says, Excitement wants me to keep expanding myself beyond who I've known myself to be. Fear of disappointment wants me to be remembering to not have falsely high expectations. Happiness wants to celebrate the challenges I've overcome that have brought me to this place. And sadness might want me to remember those in life that I've lost who aren't with me anymore. Like my baby, my dog. So write in your journal after this, after allowing these experiences of feelings to surface, and journal about them. Journal about the different emotions that you've had. And then, as always, there's a bonus. There's a bonus. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the love. So the bonus, as always, is to notice this throughout the day. 
Be present with yourself, noticing and observing what you're feeling in any given moment. So me, I'm about to go to an event and I'm going to be present with the feelings that I'm having when I'm talking to different people. Like, do they make me feel fearful? Do I feel confident? Am I feeling upset, sad, happy, excited, wanting to get to know them more? I am going to honor this. So that's my my homework that I'm giving myself. <laughs> and yeah, lesson 34. So tomorrow, lesson 35 is cultivating solitude. Cultivating solitude. I don't know if you guys know people that can't stand to be alone. There are a lot of them. Hi. Oh, awesome. I love it. Yeah. Stay, stay along. We're, we've made it to lesson 35, so we're going all the way to lesson 49. Well, you get to let your feelings out. I don't know if I want to know what they are, but if they're uh, good feelings, definitely go experience them and feel them and then journal about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to do something really funny because, as you guys know, I'm committed to sharing what I'm grateful for every single day. So I'm going to jump off and re-jump on before I go to this event. I know I'm funny, <laughs> but I don't know if it's a different audience. So i got to show that I'm doing what I promised I would because I'm my word. I'm my word, and being my word is very important to me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to jump off, jump back on and share what I'm grateful for today, which I'm very grateful for it. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining. Feel free to share this with your people because it is so important to honor our feelings and get in tune with our emotions. And it is something I constantly am working on myself. So, I mean, two years ago, I couldn't even really feel emotion within my body. That's how, that's what I was working on. Just feeling emotion within my body. When I was feeling sad, I was asked, what does that feel like? What does that feel like? And I couldn't even tell you. They're like, okay, and it boiled down to, okay, can you feel your toes? And I had to work through this. I had to work through feeling every single part of my body, like sensations. If you are, it's called um, yoga nidra. I started doing yoga nidra. You can look that up to just feel the sensations with my body. And it will talk about, okay, now listen, feel your head, feel your eyes, feel the back of your neck, different things like that. And by doing that on a regular basis, I started to become more present with myself and then started to be able to describe my feelings that I was experiencing. Yeah, yoga nidra. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna jump off and I'm gonna jump right back on <laughs> to share what I'm grateful for. But thank you guys for sharing this journey with me of finding the one. I have some dates lined up next week, so we'll see how they go. And spread the love as always. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow or maybe in five minutes. <laughs> okay. Bye. No, I'm not staying single. <laughs>